goddess, hear these tuneless numbers, rung by sweet enforcement and remembrance dear, and pardon that thy secrets should be sung even into thine own soft conscious ear. Surely I dreamt today, or did I see the winged psyche with awakened eyes? I wandered in a forest thoughtlessly, and on a sudden, fainting with surprise, saw two fair creatures couch side by side in deepest grass, beneath the whispering roof of leaves and trembled blossoms, where there ran a brooklet scarce espied. Mid hushed, cool-rooted flowers, fragrant-eyed, blue, silver-white, and budded Tyrian, they lay calm-breathing on the bedded grass, their arms embraced and their pinions too, their lips touched not, but had not bid adieu, as if disjointed by soft-handed slumber, and ready still past kisses to outnumber a tender-eyed dawn of Aurorian love. The winged boy I knew, but who wast thou, O oh, happy, happy dove, his psyche true? O oh, latest born and loveliest vision far of all Olympus' faded hierarchy, fairer than Phoebe's sapphire region star, O oh, Vesper, amorous glowworm of the sky, fairer than these, though temple thou hast none, nor altar heaped with flowers, nor virgin choir to make delicious moan upon the midnight hours, no voice, no lute, no pipe, no incense sweet from chain-swung censer teeming, no shrine, no grove, no oracle, no heat of pale-mouthed prophet dreaming. O oh, brightest, thou too late for antique vows, too, too late for the fond believing lyre, when holy were the haunted forest boughs, holy the air, the water and the fire, yet even in these days so far retired from happy pieties, thy loosened fans fluttering among the faint Olympians I see and sing by mine own eyes inspired. So let me be thy choir, and make a moan upon the midnight hours, thy voice, thy lute, thy pipe, thy incense sweet from swinged censer teeming, thy shrine, thy grove, thy oracle, thy heat of pale-mouthed prophet dreaming. Yes, I will be thy priest, and build a fane in some untrodden region of my mind, where branched thoughts, new-grown with pleasant pain, instead of pines shall murmur in the wind. Far, far around shall those dark-clustered trees fledge the wild ridged mountains steep by steep, and there by Zephyrs, streams and birds and bees, the moss-lane dryads shall be lulled to sleep. And in the midst of this wide quietness, a rosy sanctuary will I dress with the wreathed trellis of a working brain, with buds and bells and stars without a name, with all the gardener fancy e'er could feign, who, breeding flowers, will never breathe the same. And there shall be for thee all soft delight that shadowy thought can win, a bright torch and a casement... We'll be talking about the next six minutes about um, a very special poem, Old to Psyche, by John Keats. As you all know, John Keats is uh, one of the major uh, poets of the Romantic Age. Romanticism was an idea, an ideology, uh, for taking nature as the uh, supreme of any kind of inspiration and um, Ode that um, is one of their supervision of the poets uh, by which they worship something they want to take inspiration from. So generally Ode is, um, if you see the dictionary of literary terms, you'll find that the ode is a ceremonial poem. So ceremonial poem, what we understand um, according to the word ceremony is to worship something or praise something, to glorify something. But talking about this glorification or worshiping, it's not only about uh, taking anything from the object and worship it timelessly, rather the subject matter, the poets chosen for the romantic elements was not the common thing because 
you know, to take inspiration, you just can probably take the corn thing and take inspiration from it because the mundane earth had been so ugly by this time and people needed something heavenly, something natural at the same time supernatural according to Coleridge uh, to choose for the subject matter of the winter season. So top the name, the poem's name, O2 Psyche. Um, perhaps you all know about the character Psyche. Psyche is uh, one of the mythological characters uh, whose name is attached with the god, the god of love, Cupid. So definitely in this poem we will find Psyche being glorified by the poet uh, from a third person perspective through the eyes of Cupid. Um, however, the poem starts, I mean the kid's speaker, Cupid, opens the poem with an address to the goddess Psyche, urging her to hear his words and asking that she forgave him for singing to her her own secrets. She says that while wandering through the forest that very day, he stumbled upon two fair creatures lying side by side in the grass beneath a whispering roof of leaves surrounded by flowers and flowers. They, em they embraced one another with both of their arms and wings and Though their lips didn't touch, they were close to one another and ready past kisses to outnumber. The speaker says he knew. That means now the kids, John Kids is speaking that he knew the winged boy, that means the Cupid, but asks who the girl was. He answers his own question to a psyche. So here we see a wonderful. Um, soliloquy of himself and himself as being a cupid. So, if the poet would talk about the real cupid and psyche story, it, it could be a limitation for the poet to philosophize the thing. I mean, cupid's eye has become now the kid's eye, or the kid's eye or outlook has been transferred in cupid's vision which can be also termed as the trans transferred of the things. Um, however, in the second stanza, the speaker addresses Psyche again, describing her as the youngest and most beautiful of all the Olympian gods and goddess. He believes this, he says, despite the fact that, unlike other divinities, Psyche has none of the trappings of worship. She has no temples, no altars, no courage to sing for her, and so on. In the third stanza, he, the speaker attributes, uh, attributes um, this lack of psychic youth. She has come into the world too late for antique vows and the fond believing liar. So the antique vows or the fond believing liar, these two terms definitely suggest the uh, ancient Greeks' um, attribution towards the god and goddess, uh, worshipping them with the liar and all. Um, have a keep it what keep it um, wanted to say or maybe what John Keats wanted to philosophize to keep its vision is that psyche is in this poem although it's a mythological character she's not only a girl she's not only a goddess according to the means rather she is the beauty she is the transcendental part of the human being the beauty, the creative part, the aesthetic sense of the human being that lies quite deep in our soul and drives us to do something extraordinary for the world, for the people, for the human beings, for the sake of humanity. That is something we call the inner beauty and Psyche is so beautiful that her physical beauty is also transferred metaphorically to our inner beauty of our soul. Uh, you see, if you compare, uh, I mean, outwardly, if you compare 
with all the god and goddesses they have their own um, temple they they have their worshiper um, in a certain limited area inside the temple but creativity or the beauty of human being is not so biased is not so uh, political enough to create some uh, a rigid boundary to have their own followers rather it's something universal it's something passive that lies in the core of every human being people just need to discover them with their third eye with the beautiful eye of all uh, I mean which has also been symbolized to keep its eye as keep it says that or maybe John Keats philosophize this that uh, psyche doesn't need any kind of temple because she lives in everyone's heart she she doesn't need the so-called antique vows and the fond believing liar uh, rather she has got some untrodden area she has got some i mean if there is a concrete color then there is also a chance to be to uh, of its being spoiled by the touching of the worshippers by the touching of its pursuers but if you just if the color of your mind the uh, creative part of your mind if that doesn't exist in, in the concrete thing as a concrete form there's no chance to have been spoiled spoiling of it so it's better to say uh, for psyche to mm, have not having a temple rather having an abstract idea abstract temple in everyone's soul so i mean it has no chance of being spoiled so uh, for me it's something wonderful wonderful comparison of john kids and wonderful creation of john kids um, i mean what should i say he he has within his short life he has already proved that life doesn't only require the time it needs the beauty of your thoughts it needs the passion of your work so um, in the fourth stanza if we see the speaker says that even in the fallen days of his own time he would like to pay homage to psyche and become her chorus her music her oracle in the fourth stanza he even continues with this declaration saying he will become psyche's priest and build her a temple in the untrodden region this untrodden region is human beings mind i mean as ravina also said where the head is held high and the mind is free that's where the beauty lies that is something we call the untrodden region no one can throw tread upon that portion of you people might take your concrete asset concrete property but no one can take over your mind a region surrounded by thought that resembles the beauty of nature and tainted by the gardener fancy so as you call the nature the mother earth as she is the mother of everything every crucial point of human beings so nature is vindictive too as so so do the people so uh, i mean when talking about the nature it's something so mysterious it's something creative it's the supernatural thing within the natural you can define it with the definition with the definition of naturality so i mean come on where when you are in front of the ocean and counting the numberless uh, waves that's a poetry for me when i see birds singing that's a poetry for me when i see clouds wandering like a poet's mind that itself is a poetry for me when i see flowers blooming in the morning or maybe sometimes in the night that's also a poetry and um, However, the poet, at the, at the, I mean, the ending is so crucial for me at least, as he says, he promises Psyche uh, all sorts of delight and says that 
the window of her new abode will be left open at night so that her wind boy, the wind cupid, the warm love can come in. I mean, it's warm psyche to be showered with the warmth of love. I mean, if you just can imagine the situation, there's so much sensual, there's so much, I mean, you can find the sexual uh, intonation here, but uh, the traditional idea of watching sex from a concrete point of view will not help you to understand this point. In, I mean, when we talk about intercourse, there's a, two human beings, two opposite uh, op opposite genders um, have their sensual desires fulfilled. So do the creative people. I mean, it's the night when the whole world sleeps and I mean, look at the moon. It doesn't bother what people say about it. It keeps shining there. It makes it more beautiful. Flower doesn't bother about any types of smell or any people living around her rather it blooms it blooms to open its own blessings to our servants it's and beauty lies in the beholder's eyes often talk about this proverb but think about the sensual uh, sensual part of the creative person being having kind of intercourse with his own mind, with his own thoughts. In the at the at the very crucial moment of intercourse, you get so much thrill, you get so much uh, fascinated with the moment, you don't you can't define the moment with the words. You can't uh, you just shiver with the moment of um, I mean, what should I say, with a school of movement or with a very charming feeling. So, so same thing, similar thing happens with a creative person's mind when he has an intercourse, he has a wonderful feeling, a wonderful adventure with his mind and his thoughts. I mean, that is something beyond my words to explain what kids thinking. I I can only feel that, and feelings cannot be put within the words. Um, I mean, thank you for listening. Uh, it's a long video, maybe. Uh, it has already been 40 minutes. I will add some recitation of the poem. So I hope you enjoyed uh, listening to this review. That's a totally personal point of view. If you have anything to attribute to my thoughts, or if you think uh, uh, maybe some of my thoughts are not so relevant, uh, advise me, please. I'm a beginner here, and I, I want to record my thoughts as long as people of the beautiful minds are with me. Thanks for being with me. Um, it's TLM, that means the Literature Nerd. Uh, help me to spread the thoughts of mine and to collect some wonderful thoughts of others as well. Talk to you guys with the next one. Thank you.